the new video that is footprint creation a complete process with 3d mapping so we have multiple lessons here in the lesson one we will discuss about the what are footprint definition of footprints and the different types of footprints there are many types of footprints available in the market so we will discuss about smd footprint creation as well as we will also work on what are through old footprint creations one we done with the footprints what is the application of footprints on pcb and how it manufacture details we will see in the lesson two uh, we will discuss about data sheet collection and as well as 3d model collections so we'll go to third party window websites so from website we'll find out the right data sheet and we'll download the data sheet so we should know the right data sheet every data sheet should have uh, the component details about the dimension of the component and about the packages and also about the landing pattern of each and every component the landing patterns are the right information which is required for creating footprint along with that we will also work on the 3d footprint 3d model downloading in the next class in the next lesson that is patch stack creation so patch stack creation uh, in, in orchid we will use the patch stack editor software to create the solder pad paste mask as well as solder mask solder mask files in lesson 4 we will discuss about the footprint creation footprint creation is a large procedure where we need to import the solder pad which is created from the patch stack editor so we need to position each and every solder pads according to the landing pattern so in the data sheet we have got the landing pattern according to the landing pattern we have to position each and every pins or solder pads of the component and then after, after placing this uh, solder packs we will work on the some drawing files like assembly drawing files assembly is uh, referred as actual area of the component and then we will work on silk screen that is ink print which is prints on pcb that file also we will need to look at and then we will uh, work on the 3d step model we will attach the step model which we have downloaded and then we will cross check these 3d footprints lesson one here is what are footprints so we'll define the footprints the footprint should also often called as a landing pattern so footprint or the landing pattern is uh, the arrangement of pads so there are uh, probably two pads here so we get the surface ramp technology as well as uh, the through hole technologies so these pads are uh, usually used to physically attach and uh, electrically connect the component on a printed circuit board the land pattern on any circuit board matches the arrangement of leads on a component so footprints uh, we will see how it looks like on pcb so i will take a 3d ma model mapping here so we can see this uh, the green color pcb board on the pcb board we have uh, some components placed on it so i will just remove the component and we'll see uh, what are the things we will see as soon as I remove the components, we can see this, some golden plates that is the solder pads, and then we got some ink prints here that is uh, silk screen. The whole combination of uh, your solder pads, solder mask, as well as the silk screen and the solder paste is all, all called as the footprints. So here, whenever we place the component on the PCB, so if I if I place the component on PCB, so we can see here some part some part of the solder pad is exposed and this area is used for soldering this particular pin so there are some standard pattern so standard standards on how much area we need to we need for soldering purpose and how much area we need it for uh, solder masking purpose so we will discuss those uh, all details in the upcoming classes and here you can see this is a through hole component so through hole additionally one hole will come so this hole and then uh, surrounding the hole we'll have a solder patch and open up on on top of the solder pad we'll have a solder mask solder mask will protect the solder pad from any epoxy addition on the pcb so we usually go for uh, coloring the pcb just to avoid coloring on the solder pad we put the solder mask solder mask will be a greater more than the solder pad 
so here we need we will in through hole section so we will have uh, some items here in the through hole section first thing here we will be having is the drill the drill is used to uh, add these component lead in, in to insert the component lead so we need the drill so on the drill so around we get solder pads solder pad is the area where we need to solder the component and then on top of the solder pad and we put solder mask solder mask is usually greater than the solder pad so we'll discuss the uh, calculations of uh, how much solder mask we need to add how much solder pad we need to add for uh, every drill so uh, then for SMD components for example if you see this is SMD component so this is an SMD component so this area this area is the solder pad on the solder pad for any for every SMD component we will have uh, the paste mask top so we put the paste mask for paste mask uh, for every SMD component the solder along with the solder pad we will have a paste mask this is also called as a stencil so we put paste mask and on top of it we have the mask that is solder mask we will place on it these are the three things we need for any SMD components that's a solder pad paste mask and then solder mask for through hole components we'll have a drill and then solder pad solder pad as well as solder mask so we'll also have uh, the assembly area so that's this all comes under drawing part this is actually a cell screen here assembly is not will not display on uh, the PCB we can see the silk screen on top of the PCB and these are the things which we written here is all silk screen references these are all silk screen these are silk screen references so this is the combination footprints or the combination where we design for every component component to component it varies you can uh, see here this every component has got its own different different footprints here so we will have to download the data sheets of every component whichever component you want to uh, create the footprints download the data sheets and look for the dimensions and also if you want to download the 3d mapping model so you can download the mapping model or you can create the mapping model in uh, some softwares like eagle cat 360 uh, so like uh, kind of software you can create the 3d model also so in the next lesson we will discuss about uh, the collection of the data sheet and dimension details of the component as well as we will also collect the 3d models from the third body websites lesson 2 uh, we will discuss about the data sheet and uh, the model 3d model collections this lesson we will uh, discuss uh, complete uh, details about how do we select the data sheet from where to download the data sheet the data sheet which will have the dimension detail of every component which we are going to create the footprints along with that we also look for the 3d models the step models so we can go for the third party vendor websites and we will download the 3d step models so I'd like to open any uh, web browser so we'll go to Chrome browser and then we'll go to google.com so from the Google, uh, we can go with the Dizzy Keys option. So that is Dizzy Keys website. That is a supplier. Dizzy Keys is a component supplier across the globe. So we'll open the Dizzy Keys. And we'll, uh, we'd like to get the component details. That is the data sheets. For example, I would like to take uh, the timer ICs. You can take anything. So for example, I'll, go, I'll look for the timer ICs. Just come down and uh, we can select the ICs, programmable control ICs. So click on this we got some filter options here so we can come out we will get some component listed here so any component if you want to choose you can choose it so i would like to choose uh, okay so this tpl 5010 so random component i'm choosing out here and this is so uh, uh, Texas instrument manufacturer is a textiles instruments. So we can see uh, the data sheet. We got the data sheet link here. We'll click on the data sheet first. 
So the component which we are going to create the footprints, we need the dimension details. So make sure your data sheet, uh, you should have the appropriate data sheet. That data sheet must have uh, the land pattern details. At least uh, uh, the component details, if you have, then we can find out for the land pattern details. So here we can see this is a TPL module. This will go down and we'll look for the dimension details. So come down here and uh, we'll look for the okay, so packaging details are here. So these are the packaging details and uh, these are the package outline so we got the sot23 is a package name so you can look for the sot23 in uh, from any browser or any uh, search engine such as sot23 so you will get the detail about sot23 so this is sot23 detail so for this we already have got the six pin sot so we can create uh, the footprint along with this so the first uh, page we got uh, the component information that component does uh, total area of the component so this is the total area of the component the length into it that is so 3.05 and uh, 2.75 so we got the through uh, two options here so first one is 3.05 is a maximum and the 2.75 is a minimum standard so whichever you want you can use it if you are using maximum please use all the maximum values if you are using minimum values so you have to follow all minimum values so here the width of the component is 1.75 and here the lead span is 3.05 or 2.51 and also we have got the component pitch detail here so from first pin to second pin the detail is 0.95 mm for all uh, four sides we got this is the first side second and this is third and this is the last one this four means all four sides we have got 0.95 pitch similarly so we got the thickness of the component that is 1.1 so we consider this as a height of the component from the pcb surface 1.1 is the total height of the component you can see and also we need uh, the detail about the solder pad so you come down i can check out uh, the land pattern example so exposed the metal shown here on the pcb these are the export exposed pads on the pcb so along with that uh, we also got the mask details here just come down and you can check out the mask here solder mask as uh, defined this is non solder mask defined and this is the solder mask defined 0.07 mm around the component we got solder mask we can add the solder mask of 0.07 and uh, this is the uh, solder pad solder pad details you can give, you can see it here that is 1.1 uh, and uh, le length and uh, 0.6 as a width a total six pins will have a same uh, same pad area and along with that we also need the solder paste mask just come down and we hope you can also see the solder paste option we also call it as solder mask sorry solder paste or paste mask we also call it as paste mask so this is uh, still same you can see this uh, 1.1 and 0.6 same as the solder pad so every information is given here in this data sheet so accordingly we need to design the solder pad as well as uh, the drawing details that is the screen assembly and etc etc so this uh, uh, data sheet is uh, quite enough for us to create the proper footprint uh, SMD footprint specifically so I'll just uh, save this footprint and uh, we need the 3d CAD model so we'll look for the 3d CAD model just come down in the DZ keys options so here in the document and media option section so you can see the ETA models here we can see that the ETA models are given here we got the two links here one is the, from the snap ETA and the one more is from ultra library so you can see the first one is a snap eda and ultra library these are also a footprint provider so this uh, these provide you the proper footprints as well as uh, 3d details 3d cad models so i'll open the first one so we'll go to the snap eda and we'll look for the right 3d model so you must be logged in so i have already logged in and uh, these are the symbol and this is uh, the already footprint has been created and we got the 3d model option here so footprint section we will discuss how to create this footprint on our own uh, from our own tool and uh, we'll just have to download uh, the 3d CAD model so click on the 3d model 
we'll see whether the 3d model is available for our component yeah this 3d model is available and we can download this 3d model so just come down here we have got the download 3d model options so click on this down the 3d step model is available now so we cannot directly open the step model so we can uh, assign to our footprint created footprint in our orchid and allegro tool so these are the two steps where we have uh, got our uh, data sheet we collected the data sheet uh, which is having component dimension details and along with that it is also having the solder pad solder mask and uh, paste mark details with that uh, we also got the 3d cad model so we have downloaded 3d cad model so in the next lessons we will discuss about uh, how to create the proper footprint and what are the steps to create the footprint and then we will discuss about uh, how to map 3d to the existing or created footprints lesson 3 that is uh, pad stack creation so to create the pads, we need the pad stack creation uh, software, which uh, which will come along with the AutoCAD and Allegro installation. So we cannot create the pads blindly. We must know the details about the component and actual pins, and also we must have uh, the solder pad details about the component. So we have uh, downloaded the data sheet of a particular component. So we will open the data sheet. So from the data sheet, we will like, grab the information about uh, the solder pads, space pad, paste mask, and solder mask details. And also, we will have a component which every every detail about the component will get it from the data sheet. So we'll open the data sheet which we have uh, downloaded earlier. So from this uh, data sheet, it's a top view of the component. So here. So this is the length and width of the component. This is length of the component and this is width of the component. And uh, we got total six pins here. This is the SMD pins. This is the first pin. And this is the third, four, five, six. That uh, pin numbers are on uh, U shape. And this is more pin number one. This is two, three, and then four, five, and then six. So we also have the information about uh, the pitch here. We can see all four pitch. That is 0 0.95 from the center to center of uh, solder pad or normal pad component pad and we will open the solder pad we are going to create the solder pad first so when the pad stack creation we need to create the solder pad so this is the solder pad which will uh, come on pcb that is land pattern we also call it as a land pattern so these are these pads are exposed on pcb the component will come and sit on this uh, solder pad so this is essentially called as the footprint so on this component uh, component pad actual pad will come and sit and then solder solder will be done so here we can see uh, this particular pin other uh, pad uh, solder pad what we call or the land pattern sizes are given here so the total six uh, pin sizes are given here these are all rectangular pads so length is uh, 1.1 mm and the width is uh, 0.6 mm so here we can see that is 6 into 1.1 that means all the six all six solder pad length is 1.1 and here 6 into 0.6 is all solder pads width is 0.6 so this is about solder pad and uh, we also got the pitch here so pitch detail is 4 into 0.95 0.95 that is 0.95 the actual uh, pitch or the distance between one pin to another pin so this is uh, four four means we got the first pin to second pin is one and second pin to third pin and fourth pin to fifth pin and fifth pin to sixth pin these are the four segments or four so all four pitch are 0.95 and also we got uh, terminal row spacing so this is one terminal we call it as and this is another terminal and the distance between the, these two are 2.7 and this is called the terminal row spacing so the terminal row spacing here is 2.7 so this is the LAN pattern so on PCB we must uh, design the same thing here so we will design one pad stack and we will place according to these dimensions so here uh, one uh, pad stack needs the multiple of multiple details here for example pad stack first thing uh, we have here is solder pad 
so first thing we put the solder pad which is given here that is exposure metal so or called as solder pad on this solder pad component actual pad will sit and we can do the soldering so solder pad and then after solder pad uh, we will also have the paste mask the paste mask option is also there so we need to put the paste on the solder pad so how much paste mask we need to put it so we'll see that how much paste mask we need to put and then uh, we need the solder mask so we must mask our solder pad so to expose it so before adding uh, before adding the epoxy on the PCB or uh, coloring on PCB we must put the solder mask so mask will protect our solder pad and keep it exposed once we done this epoxy application on the PCB so we need a solder mask so we will discuss about how much solder mask is required and how much paste mask is required and how much what is solder pad area so then the data sheet we have got the land pattern option here that the land pattern that is 6 1.1 and 0 0.6 is the actual solder pad solder pad is given from the data sheet so we will see the solder pad here the solder pad is equal to that is 1.1 mm and solder pad length the width is 0 0.6 mm so this is the solder pad and solder mask sorry we will we'll discuss about paste mask so the paste mask is equal to solder pad so we were not going to change it so whatever the solder pad we have the same size solder paste mask we are going to put it on the solder pad and then we need uh, the solder mask solder mask must be greater than it must be greater than the solder pad so how much it should be greater than so it depends it depends upon the manufacturer or it depends upon the the client or it is sometimes uh, many of the time most of the time it will be mentioned in the data sheet itself it may be two mils it may be four mils it may be five mils it may be three mils so whatever size so the size is mentioned in the data sheet so make sure the solder mask must be greater than the solder pad so how much mils it will be sometime it will be most of the time it will be given in the data sheet and uh, other, otherwise you can take it uh, 3 mils 2 mils 4 mils 5 mils 6 mils 8 mils also you can take it but not do not waste a lot of uh, area on solder pad so at least uh, 6 mil is enough uh, 8 mils are enough and uh, if uh, if it is not given in the data sheet so here in this data sheet uh, they have already given so just come down here and we can check the solder mask is solder mask defined here the solder mask defined is 0 0.07 in mm it is given in mm so it turns to 3 mils approximately 2 to 3 mils we have so according to we have to give it to 2 to 2 3 mils and solder paste or paste mask you can see here solder paste or paste mask it is equal to solder pad that is 1.1 in depth and 0.6 in width so this is about a solder pad solder mask as well as paste mask options so how to create we will see now so go to the start button and look for the pad stack editor so you can click uh, you can click on the pad stack editor so before creating the any footprint we must create the folder uh, for each and every footprint so we'll go to data sheet as so you go to desktop so i'll create a new folder so i'll look for the folder name i'll give that is the timer ic got just i'll type with the timer so we'll go to pad stack editor so here we got some environment here so in the pad stack editor first thing i will go to file option and click on new file new so click on new so we'll open a small pop-up so the first thing here is directory we we can see here this is a default directory so if you want you can change this directory i will change the directory to the desktop which i created the footprint so click on this three dot buttons so we'll go to the desktop so on the desktop we got the timer folder so double click on the timer and i'll give the name of the pad so simply i will give the timer as a name of the pad or pad 
timer underscore back so do not use any spaces in names and the extension here is dot pad that patch tag uh, by default it will get the dot pad option click on save and in the, uh, in the pop-up you can see the directory the directory if you confirm the directory is correct and then we got the patch tag name so you can give any name here but this we have got some standard uh, naming standard so i'll explain you the naming standard in few minutes later and this is a patch tag usage what type of pad you are creating so i will choose here that is an smd pin so select smd pin and then click on ok so make sure all three are right so the directory is right patch tag name i just given as a timer pad so i will explain you about this naming standard and then pad stack usage that is an SMD pin I'm selecting then click on OK so as soon as you click on OK so you can make sure whether this pad is saved or not you can just come top left corner we can see the timer pad is created and also we can see this location or the directory whether it is right or wrong so the right directory and we got the name of the pad so here we got some more tabs here that is uh, start tab drill secondary drill drill symbol drill offset design layers mask layer options and then summary so here first thing we'll go to start in the start we will have the pad stack usage what type of pads you are going to use it we need to select the pad stack here so we got through pin smd via blind varied micro slot etc so we are going to use the SMD pad, I will choose the SMD pad and the next thing bottom side we got the geometry of the solder uh, pad here. So the geometry of the solder pad is in the data sheet it is going to be a rectangle or round, round a rectangle also you can take it just go to the data sheet and you can cross check here the land pattern. You can see the land pattern so all corners they got some small round option you get it. You can also use a rounded rectangle or otherwise you can use a normal rectangle also because the, the dimension is given of 1.1 and 0 0.6 is of the rectangular and you can also make a small rect rounded rectangle also you can choose it so for say i am going to choose the rounded rectangle only so otherwise you can select the rectangle options so i'll click on the rounded rectangle and make sure as soon as you come to this section you should should be very careful of uh, units here so the unit option the unit option here is in mils so we can change it to millimeters so i'll click on this unit and select in millimeters so click yes now all the units are in millimeters so i selected smd pins and then rounded rectangles and then we'll go to second option that is drill so we do not need any drill here so we'll keep the whole type is none so we are creating SMD pins so we don't want any tails on this so as soon as you make this drill slot as uh, none the secondary drill, drill symbol drill offset options will be disabled because that will only open when we create these through hole component or drilled solder pads next thing we will open the design layers so the design layers we are going to mention about the solder packages so here any PCB for so PCB will by default PCB will have two layers. So this is the top layer and this is the bottom layer. So this is top layer and the bottom one is bottom layer. So this is the default PCB. The top layer is also called as the begin layer. Top layer is also called as the begin layer. And the bottom layer is also called as an end layer. So here wherever whenever you are creating whenever you are going to create the solder pad and pad stack it uh, so we must place it on the begin layer so begin layer that refers to top layer or the first layer of the pcb so the regular pad is given as none so we'll select the regular pad at none so the regular pad geometry we can see here come down here and we can check the geometry of the regular pad it's, i'll change it from none to rectangle or rounded rectangle i'll choose a rounded rectangle here and we'll get the detail about the solder pad entry 
so we can go enter here so width of the component here is 1.1 and height of the component is 0.6 see as soon as you enter 1.1 and 0.6 so here we can see the solder pad picture and here also we can see the solder pad picture so this is what uh, 1.1 and this is what 0.6 which is mentioned in the data sheet so this is the solder pad on top side of the pcb where uh, the component spin will sit on this and solder will be done so we need a rounded rectangle so corner is not mentioned we'll use a point 0.1 and check it out so we can see a small round a rounded rectangle has been created i just use the random values here 0.1 that is 4 mils and you can also use 0.0 7 0.08 also you can use it for example 0.05 it is half of it and we if you don't want any corner so you can just uncheck so that particular corner will, be, will not be rounded here you can see this particular corner is not rounded but the other corner is rounded so i want all four corners i'll choose all four corners to be rounded here so next one is offset here we got uh, offset x and on an offset y that, that that decides the origin of the pin so i kept zero and zero here offset x and offset y so we got the origin of the offset exactly center of the solar pad so we need this this is what the offset origin that is x zero and then y zero if i put x one here so the but uh, they say this origin will move towards the right side if it minus one it will move towards the left side so we don't want that confusion so we need uh, offset origin or offset origin is also called as the solder pad origin the pad origin must be center of the pad so we'll keep zero zero on the while creating this pad stamp so the next one is mask layer the design layer is done so in design layer we only define the solder pad and we'll go to mask layer in the mask layer we need to define this is an smd pin so we must define two things here first thing we are going to define about the paste paste mask and that paste mask is uh, equal equal to solder pad so i will use the same thing so here we got the paste mask top and bottom so i'll only use the top things we are not going for the bottom because smd component always on any one side so that if, if if this is an SMD component so it will only touch on one in the one side of the PCB it will not touch the other side of the PCB so I will only create by default we are going to create it on top side only so paste mask is also I want it on top only so paste mask top I'll select the paste mask top come down here again if you want to enter the details we need to come down here we need to mention what type of geometry and then it will allow you to enter the details so click on this none and i want this add also the rounded rectangle so here width is 1.1 which is given in the data sheet and height is 0.6 and rounded rectangle 0.05 we have taken just uh, for an example and all four corners we need and offset also i need 0 0 so all these setting we know it now so width and uh, height we have taken it from the data sheet 0.01 random value we have used it just to make the all corners around the rectangle offset 0 and x0 y0 we kept to maintain the proper origin of the particular pad or mask next thing what we need is the solder mask solder mask top so in the data sheet they have already mentioned about the solder mask solder mask it must be plus 0.07 mm so we must add 0.07 mm we must add this 0.07 mm to the length as well as width of the solder pad so the length here is 0.1.1 we are going to add 0.07 to it and also width is 0.7 we are going to add 0.07 on it so what I'm going to do is uh, I will just click on this solder pad, solder mask top. So click on this. We will use rounded rectangle to that also. So width is 1.1. We are going to add 1.1, and we are going to add it 0.07. So 1.17 it will be. So and then next for width 0.6 it is. So 0.67 it will be. Hope you're understanding this one. So what we are, what we did here is the length, the length of the pad is, yes, the length of the pad is uh, 
or width of the pad if we say or okay, w if we take w that w is equal to 1.1 so we must add 0.07 to it 0.07 which is mentioned in the data sheet and that will be one point one seven the same one point one seven is added in a width similarly zero point six the length is zero point six we are going to add zero point six we are going to add zero point zero seven mm so it will be zero point six seven mm the zero point six seven mm is added into the solar mask so this is how we are going to create this uh, detailed uh, detailed solar pad and we need a, a corner rectangles corner radius so i'll keep it 0 0.05 as it is and all uh, we need all side and offset also we keep it 0 0 x0 as well as y0 we go to options this is not required go to summary and can cross check so we have created all the top side that is around a around rectangle which is 1.1 and height is 0 0.6 corner radius we just kept 0 0.05 and all uh, upright up left and lower left lower right and upper right all four corners are rounded rectangles and come down here we can see uh, the solder pad the solder mask here rounded rectangle uh, that is 1.17 that is we have added 0 0.07 which is mentioned in the data sheet just go to data sheet and cross check so here uh, the land pattern just come down here and you can see this uh, soto mask is defined as 0.07 minimum around so all around we got 0.07 extra we have added the same thing we have added in the pad stack later also and then we got the paste mask paste mask is equal that is equal to solder mask solder solder pad so we have added same width as well as height to the solder pad so we'll go to file and then click on save so how do we confirm so we just go to corner side here right side bottom corner so we'll get the notification of the saved pad here so this particular on the location in this given location we got the timer pad dot pad is saved so if you don't get this uh, notification that doesn't mean that does means that your pad is not saved make sure you can uh, save two to three times but sometimes if it is not saving you need to save it two to three times to get this notification once this notification is you can see that particular pad file is saved we'll go and check whether the pad is created or not i uh, will go to the desktop option in the timer we have um, got the dot pad as created timer dot pad that is dot pad file the type is pad file which is created so this is an SMD uh, pad stack creation procedure. In the next lesson, we will uh, work on footprint creation using PCB editor. Lesson four, we will discuss about uh, footprint creation. Footprint creation, we will be able to make the footprint creation from uh, the software called PCB editor or for all Allegro. So we'll get into Allegro's. We'll go to start and click on uh, type pcb editor so click on this pcb editor tool so you can select the allegro pcb designer and then click on copy so we'll open the data sheet that data sheet will have uh, the details about the component and the pad position details so we have uh, several methods of creating the pad position so we'll see one by one here so this is our pad positioning or landing pattern details so we have already created uh, the solder pad of 1.1 and 0 0.6 let me take the pad and here at the pitch the distance between the first pin to the second pin is around uh, 0.95 is given here is 0 0.05 0.95 and for all four it is uh, 0 0.95 and here we got the 2.7 that is terminal row spacing so we'll uh, we'll have multiple methods so we will see one by one 
so we'll, first we will create we will uh, do the pad placement manually and then we will use some uh, array methods and then we will use some wizard methods so i'll open i have opened the editor so we'll go to file option so click on file and then go to new option so we need to set the location here so wherever the pad we have created the same location we will select so i'll click on the browse button so on the desktop so we have created uh, the timer folder so i'll select the timer folder and here the type i will choose all and here i will type as timer the footprint name so click on open now we can see uh, the location is set here the drawing name is also given and the drawing type it must be the package symbol so first we will use the package symbol we will uh, discuss how do we create uh, using the package symbol and then we'll go with the package symbol wizard the next option is package symbol wizard one by one we will see uh, in this first case i'll choose package symbol and as soon as you click on package symbol the extension will change it to dot dra that is drawing file when it is board file dot that will be a board dot brd file so we are creating this support print so we need to use the package symbol options so the package symbol we are going to make a pad positioning here as well as set some drawing skill grade so click ok so you will get with a new fresh new uh, drawing file we can see the name of the drawing is timer.dra and this location we need to confirm these two and we need to continue that so the first thing is here we need uh, we have see the black screen this this area this is the package symbol uh, drawing area so we need to select a particular area and this black screen no, not entire black screen is not able to we can not, not be able to use it but we need to mention the required space here so we'll go to setup first we do some setup set that is our default setup screen we can do it so go to design parameters so in the in, in the design parameter we have got multiple options here from design display text the shapes flow planning and then route options so i'll click on display here so i'll keep these display units as uh, default units but we we'll come to enhance display modes so i would like to check all the boxes so i just don't want to miss anything from the package designer i want everything to be displayed on on the design so i'll click on apply so and then go to second option here design options click on the design so first segment here is size in the size we must mention the user units so i selected them millimeters if you are working on mills you can choose mills if you are working on inches you can choose inches just by clicking on this drop down button you will have mills inches micron, microns multi uh, millimeters as well as centimeters i'm going to decide uh, i'm, I'm going to design using the multi millimeter option so i'll select millimeter yes the second option is size this size decides the area on which you want to able you want to create the design so there is a black screen that is unlimited black screen just i will select the drop down button and i'll choose the a4 sheet so if when, as soon as i click on a4 sheet we need to click on apply options so if you click on apply and then click ok in this entire screen you can see only a4 sheet is selected so this will a4 sheet will be active for your design and other side is completely phased for example i will on this grid so you can go to grid option here so you can see a small icon called grid toggle click on a grid toggle and you can see this grid toggles grids are appeared here dot grids are appeared here you can also go to setups and grids option here click on the grids and he, here we have an option to on the grids and off the grids so you can click on if you click off it the grids will be gone off as soon as you click on ok so you can have an option called toggle you can click once one click it will show one click it will hide so i'll choose here so this area is a4 sheet area uh, only this area is active for our design and rest area is completely phased we cannot able to design in this area so this area is good for this area is active for component or footprint creation so i'll off the grids here so you can uh, zoom in zoom out by just scrolling the mouse button 
Okay, if you see this is uh, the grid area, so if I zoom it by scrolling, so you can increase the or you can zoom in, zoom in the area and you can see the proper grids, so just off the grids. So this is about the grids, you can go to setups and grids option, so you can set the grids, you can change the grids option. So we have an option to change the grids, I will just make it 0.1 grid. Make sure wherever there wherever there is X and Y, you can choose grids, and wherever offset, make sure it should be zero. Like wherever spacing X and Y, make it 0.1 or 4 mils. Wherever offset that is zero, always keep it offset zero. So I will explain you whenever you need an offset origin, then we can select the offset grid size so click ok so now you click on the grids so grid size is very small now it is 0.1 that is 4 mils and the size is very small right now so next option is go to setup option design parameter so and then you should go to text option so inside the text that means any text you write it so the text parameter parameter block will be one by default if you want to change it you can change it and you can see what are the text blocks so go to setup text sizes here i have choose a text block one so this is the text block area so where the text block one is this first one so the text block width is around 0.4 height is 0.6 line spacing is 0.7 photo width is 0 and character spacing is 0.1 so as if you use text block 2 it will be bigger than the text block one if you use text block 3 it is bigger than text block 1 and text block 2 so any size uh, you can choose it it's up to you so i will use text block 1 by default if you want to change this you can change it at any time so i click ok here text block i'll keep it as 1 and then click apply ok so what we did here we did uh, setups design parameters we went to design uh, display options we'll on all the displays go to design parameters so i'll choose the a4 sheet and inside the A4 sheet, we can see the width and height. Uh, width and height of this area is 297 and 210. 210. If I click apply and then OK, the working area here is. So this is the working area. It is 290 and 210. Its area is 210 and 290. This 210 is a 290. And it is 210 width similarly we'll go to this software doesn't know where the pad dot pads on for example we have already created the timer pad that dot pad the location is already set on uh, one one of the folder that is directory but this particular software doesn't know where the pad files are so we need to assign the path to this one this for this software so go to setups option click on the user preferences so in the user preferences we have got many folders here you can choose on paths option click on plus button and you can choose a library option so in this library we got many options so we need to choose a pad path here so there is a pad path we can choose the pad path and then click on this three dots to assign the location in orchid or allegro wherever you see the three dots that means it is use it to locate the particular directory or the location so click on this three dots so you can see by default we got some path so we got four options here one is insert new uh, new location and then delete the location existing and these two are to move and to up to move down and to move up the existing location i will i would like to delete this so click on delete and i want to insert the new location that click on new location again we got three dots here click on this and locate the footprint area so this is the footprint area in the desktop we got timer inside the timer we got the dot pad that is dot pad is available inside the timer folder i will select the timer folder and then click on ok so we got the file here that is the location and then click ok we assign the pad path and then next we need to assign the psm path here in case the psm is means that is package symbol model psm path that refers to package symbol module so that means that the footprint the whenever we save this particular drawing so it will create a package symbol module and that extension will be dot psm 
so dot psm is your final footprint location final footprint file so we need to assign the location for this psm file also we will assign the same location where we have pad as well as drawing file so i will uh, select the same dot three dots here and i will delete the existing and will insert the new one and i'll choose the timer my location here click on ok so the same location i will choose and then click ok so we have assigned two paths here first thing is we assign the pad path second thing is we assign the psm path pad path is where we create, we have created the pads of this particular component and psm is a location where your footprint will save the same path we have given so pad path extension will be dot pad and the psm path extension will be dot psm and uh, the drawing file is saved the file will be saved as dot dra so we'll go to setup user preferences so pad path i just uh, didn't save that one so i'll choose timer here click ok psm path select here click on this timer click ok and then click apply and then ok now we have got we have done all these setups so we'll go to our uh, data sheet and here we need to do the six pad positionings so we consider this as one column this is another column so vertically we are going to create it and this this would be body centered this would be body center or origin of the component body so we'll keep origin here and it will be a y axis x axis y axis this is y axis as well as this is x axis so first thing we are going to keep origin on the center and uh, on top side we got 0 0.95 and the left side the distance is 2.7 by half so we this way also we can assign the uh, uh, pad, pad position so here the next procedure what we are going to follow is we need to call the i just zoom in my origin so first procedure here will be the pad positioning second option is giving the dimensions assigning the dimensions these two we will gonna decide now so we got a two and i would like to add here pad one pad two and then pad three and right side also we got to pad four pad five pad six this way we need to assign we must know the location of this this y axis is 0 0.95 and we have the full uh, pitch that is one uh, terminal to another terminal so if i make it half i'll get the half side of this one that is 2.7 uh, divided by 2 from the data sheet if i take this is 2.7 if i make if i make divided by 2 so we'll get 2.7 that is 27 This y axis is 0 0.95 this is also 0 0.95 and here also 0 0.95 here also 0 0.95 and this origin is 0 comma 0 this will be 0 comma 0 and this y axis and this is x axis x axis if you do it divided by 2 so we will get it around 1 point so 1.35 this side and 1.35 the other side so totally we will get 2.7 so from the origin first pair pin uh, position coordinates will be around 0 0.95 and minus 1.35 similarly second pad will be on x axis it will be 0 it will be minus 1.35 y axis will be 0 and third pin will be both are minus that is y is minus 0 0.95 and x axis is minus 0 1.35 this way we are going to do manual 
comp uh, manual pin placement we will see the first method that is manual place pin positioning so we'll call the pin first so we'll go to layout here and then choose the pins option layout and then pins we come to options whenever uh, whenever you choose any uh, command here so always we must come to the right side that is we got three options visibility options and find so i'll go to options here so inside the options it will ask you to choose the pad stack so we have created the pad stack and also we have assigned assigned the pad location so as soon as you click on this browse button so it will show you the list of pads in, from that particular location so we have uh, the timer pad here select the timer pad and then click ok so we got the pad here that is a rounded rectangle pad so we need to click on origin so that will be zero zero so here one thing is i'm not going to add any click here so i would like to use the command button and i will mention the command and it will go and sit in that particular location so here my first first pin location will be y axis is 0 0.95 and x axis is minus 1.35 so the same command i am going to do in the command bar so here is the command bar so we need to mention the command here in this command area so the command will be so x x refer to origin of the page and from x so it is first thing we are going to make the x axis detail that is minus 1.35 and if i put space it will jump to y axis and that will be 0 0.95 will be y axis so this is the command here so here x refers to the origin of the sheet and as soon as you click on space so we'll go with the x coordinates so i'll enter the x coordinate that is minus 1.35 and then again one more space we keep it will change the axis to y and then i'll enter the y coordinates that is 0 0.95 and then we need to press enter here so this is the command we can use it this is a manual method so i will just go to command area here so in the command area i'll press x x that means from the origin of the sheet so from the origin first if i press space now it will jump to x coordinates in x coordinates i'll keep minus 1.35 this is minus minus means the reverse direction from the x axis and if i press space it will jump to y axis now so from y axis it is 0. 0.95 and then i'm gonna press enter here press enter so now you can see uh, the pad has been set on the x and y direction that is 0 0.95 top and uh, minus 1.35 left side and also you can see the pin number here pin number is just uh, shifted towards the left side just that is because of this offset here so we got the offset here offset origin so a pin has its offset origin that is 0 0 so here we have mentioned here minus 1.27 that's why it is moving towards minus 1.27 so we make it that, that 0 so if you are not done you can do right click here you can do oops also that uh, that means it is just like a undo options so one control z options so here i'll make it same thing here i'll make it offset to 0 0 and x I will use the command x from x axis it is space that is x coordinates will be minus 1.35 and space if you put it, it will go to y coordinates and then y coordinates will be 0 0.95 and then press enter so we can see this component pin number pin number is exactly on the center of the pad and that is what the x offset 0 and offset offset x 0 and y 0 Similarly, we will need to put the second pin, second pin on the x axis, but y is 0, x will be minus 1.35, I will put the same thing, x that is from the origin, it will be minus 1.35 and y will be 0, I will keep it y as 0 here, so, and then press enter, so it will be this next pin. So from the origin, I will just come to downside here, so we will choose here again x space, I will choose so x minus 1.35 and if you put space space y is also in negative direction now i'll go to minus 0 0.95 it 
it is downside press enter we can get the third pin so the pin number is also appeared so that is the third pin next thing we must go to this other side of the uh, other side of the component so it will be pin number four so pin number four is coming from the bottom side so it is x now positive direction y is negative direction i'll press the command as x space x space it is 1.35 from the positive direction and y is minus 0 0.95 and then press enter you can see the fourth pin and now fifth pin is on x direction y is 0 so we'll keep x space 1.35 y is 0 press enter you can see the second thing so third pin will be on top of it so it will be x as x and y both are positive I'll keep it x space 1.35 and y is 0 0.95 then press enter we got all six pad positioned exactly as mentioned in the data sheet so once you are done with you just click on right click and use the done option as soon as you click on right click done the operation will be finished successfully we got all six pins we need to reconfirm uh, we need to cross check the details so pitch is 0 0.95 so we have a uh, two options one is uh, we have to use the scale option click on the scale button and i will choose the first pin to second pin and here we can see the distance the total distance between the y axis is 0.95 which is as mentioned in the data sheet that is 0.95 so it said all four will be 0.95 we'll cross check all four just click on this first second pin to third pin is also 0.95 yes it is right similarly we can also check the other side so that is also still 0 0.95 and the last one is from fifth to fourth pin 0 0.95 we can also check the terminal row spacing the terminal row spacing is from one side of the pin to another side of the pin that is 2.7 so we can cross check using the scale method so first pin to sixth pin we can choose and that is 2.7 so this is what we have we were required <coughs> all the pads the distance between the pads uh, from one one row to another row is also right according to the data sheet so this is the right positioning and we can see this green color pad that green color pad is solder pad and outside we got the solder mask and on top of it we also have the paste mask and then pin number is also appearing the pin number will not appear on the pcb so for your design only we can cross check the pin numbers so this is the one way of adding the component sorry adding the pad positioning on the right place according to the data sheet so we just follow the data sheet and we place the pads here we'll now see the second way of creating the pad positioning I am going to delete these pads. If you want to delete these pads, just click on the delete button here. So go to the find option on the right side. I will make all of, I will only choose the pins and then we will be able to delete the pins. One by one we can delete it. Just need to right click and done. So pins will be deleted. The second option is we can use some formula options. So we will go to layout and then click on pins. So we got the pin already selected so we just come to this browse button and you can select the pad whichever pad you want you can select it and then click on ok the pad is selected here so here here we need to observe one thing is the formula bar here so we got the two axis here that is x axis and then y axis so here we have uh, got the origin so with respect to origin also we can mention so x axis how many pins we required for example uh, our our pad standard is this is where i'll keep the original first pin and this is the sixth pin and second and then third pin and this is the fourth and fifth pin so this is what the uh, the pad positions Yes, here the x axis, this is origin. Here, x axis it means we have got this axis. In x axis, we need two. In x axis, we need two. 
and we must know the distance between the x axis is 2.7 we need to mention 2.7 here in the spacing option and order right if i keep the right the second pin will be on the right side and then y axis we need a 3 here so i'll keep y axis 3 and the distance between each pin will be and 0.95 we need to mention 0.95 and the second pin or the next pins will be downside so here it is downside we can use this formula and also we can form the right pad position so we will try this one so i'll keep x axis 2 and then spacing from that x axis is 2.7 and keep the second row on right side next one is y axis so y axis i need i need 3 and the distance between each pin will be 0 0.95 and I'll keep the next pin will be downside. So I'll keep the pin number here. So this this area is of pin number area. So pin number it starts with one, and every time it will increment by two. We'll see how this works. Text block I'll keep it as one, so that is one of the size, and I'll keep the x offset x and offset y at zero zero. And also make sure your copy mode will keep rectangular copy mode will keep it rectangular that means the pins are in rectangular mode the positionings are in rectangular mode irrespective of whatever the number of pins and number of rows are so we got one more method here that is polar method polar that does means so your pins are on polar fashion pin placement will be on polar fashion so we don't want this so we want rectangular mode so we keep the rectangular mode that copy mode will be on rectangular mode so this is the formula here on x axis we got uh, 2 the distance between the two will be 0.2.7 and y axis is 3 with the distance is 0.95 then the next question is where to click so first step first of all i would like to disc i would like to place my components or pads from the origin so i would like to click on origin the origin coordinates will be x 0 0 the coordinates of the origin will be of 0 0 so to mention that we need to add the coordinates as x space 0 space 0 that means it means it clicks on origin so we will click on origin so i'll press this command here so inside this i just mention x space 0 space 0 and if i press enter you can see the first pin will place it on origin the first pin is placed on origin right click done if you do it we can see the pin numbers are in the rectangular mode so pin number one two three four five six it is in zigzag fashion so we can change it pin numbers we will change it now and the origin also we need to shift the origin uh, to the body center so origin is now on the pin number one we can shift the origin is on body center so there is one more method so we must know uh, this coordinate so this coordinate is from the origin if you see the data sheet from uh, this uh, this is the origin from this origin this coordinate is 0 0.95 on y axis and minus 1.35 on x axis so directly we can choose that so that our origin will be on the center line so what i'm going to do is i just recreate the same but i wanted origin to be body centered so we'll go to layout and then pins so here x axis 2 and then y axis 3 i'll keep it as it is pin number 1 so where i'm going to click so i am going to click on top and left so the top side that is from x that is minus 1.35 and y is 0 0.95 the click is i'm going to click it on this area this is 1.35 in uh, x axis that is minus 1.35 y axis is 0 0.95 so that your first pin will come here using this using this the formula if you see x axis 2 that means second pin will be somewhere here and uh, the distance is 2.7 and y axis is 3 so it will maintain y axis 3 and that will be copied to other side also so this way we will get it so then the origin will be on body center yes i'll just click on enter so we can see all pins are positioned properly and do right click and done so we can see this origin is body center 
so on the first pin from the origin to first pin if you see so dx and dy we need to calculate here so if i see this that this this distance is around 1.65 but we don't want that distance we were uh, more interested in uh, dy and then dx so this is dy differential distance and this is dx that is a differential distance on x axis and we can see here the differential dif uh, distance is 1.35 on x axis and uh, 0.95 is a differential difference on y axis that is 0.95 so this is the pad positioning using the formula method so uh, we can now change the pin numbers here so pin number changing option is we should go to edit option inside the edit we just click on the text i'm going to edit that text select text and this is pin number one we don't want to change it pin number three just click on the pin number three and uh, type two from the keypad and click on the pin number five type three from the keypad and click on the six and make it four and click here make it five click here and make it six right click done so once you've done right click so all pin numbers got edited according to your requirement now we can see the distance between the first pin to second pin is 0.95 the straight uh, the uh, direct distance uh, likewise we need the terminal row spacing that is from first row to second row it is 2.7 according to the data sheet so this is the second way of uh, adding the pad positioning we also have one more method so we will see that one more method of creating the uh, pad positioning uh, just near future we will we will next thing we are going to discuss about uh, the dimensions so if you want to display the dimension here so just like just like in the data sheet you can see here these are the dimensions this way so you have got arrow mark head arrow mark and the distance and the area of the pad if you want to uh, add those kind of dimensions on it so we will see how to make it so open this we'll go to dimension option so you can see a dimension and then click on the dimension environment so in the dimension environment you can see now it is uh, automatically changed to the board geometry and the dimension so we need to right click here and uh, we select the linear dimensions so linear dimension straight dimensions so i will click on pin number one to pin number two and you can see the size is very big in size it is 0 0.95 the text size is very big so we need to edit this to edit this just right click here and go to parameters so uh, parameters that means that is the default setups so we got uh, general setups text setups the line setups so in general setups i will choose nc characters and i will use the millimeter options go to text option and as i told you the text block here is nine so we'll reduce it i will bring it to one and we will cross check so click apply and then click ok so right click here linear dimension otherwise you can go to dimension dimension environment right click linear dimension so we can choose the first pin to second pin so the size is a little bit decreased if you still want to decrease the size of this text you can still do it so that one we can do it in setups here i'll just right click here and cancel we'll go to setups now setup design parameter we'll go to text option so here the setup text sizes so we have chosen one one is still looks bigger in size so we'll go to setup text sizes so all 16 so first in first one is the very minimum in size so i would like to add one more new one new text block i'm going to add that is 17 click on add now we got the 17 text block so i will choose it the smaller in size for example i will choose it 0 0.2 and uh, height is 0 0.4 and here the line spacing is 0 0.2 only will do and the character spacing is 0 0.1 will keep it and then click ok so apply and then click ok 17 we will use it so we'll go to dimensions dimension environment right click we'll go to parameters so in the text option i will choose the 17th text block 17 which we have created 
and then I'll click apply and then ok so we will see now the right click here linear dimensions so click on first and second you can see the size is a little bit reduced if you still want you can reduce it so we'll reduce that in setups so we'll go to setup design parameters text text block point into the point 2 I'll take it 0 0.1 and this will be 0 0.2 this will be 0 0.1 and that will also I'll keep it 0 0.5 photo width if you want you can keep the photo width as 0 0.05 the smaller size so I'll click ok apply and then click ok so now we'll try with the dimensions dimension dimension environment so right click here parameter we just cross check the text block text block is 17 apply ok so right click here linear dimensions click on the pin 1 pin 2 can see a small size that is 0.95 so we have added the photo width that is 0.05 that's why we can see the 0.95 the width is very big in size so we'll reduce that so go to setups here text size in 17 so just make it 0 and then click ok apply then click ok so we'll go to tools dimensions right click here first thing and second thing we can see 0 0.95 with a 0 dimension but one more thing you observe here the arrow mark is very big in size first thing is the arrow mark is very big in size and the second thing is that these lines are not touching to the pads so I want it from the pad so we'll do that options in dimensions dimensions and environment go to right click here click on parameters so in the text option we did the text block we have added placeholder that means after point uh, if you if you are if you are having a decimal points so whether you want to use the period period means it will uh, keep the full stop and the comma it will be comma for example if you want if you use comma that will be one comma two if you use the period that will be one point two likewise it will come so i'll keep it period period option here <coughs> next thing uh, we need to go to the line options so click on the line yes uh, here we have got the arrow mark here so this is arrow we have selected the arrow so we got the head type three point head type arrow we have the head length is 4 mm that means this arrow head length is 4 mm and the head width is 1.25 mm so this length this length is 4 mm and this length is 1.25 mm it is very big in size so we need to reduce it I'll just make it uh, 0.5 head width is 0.5 and uh, head length is 1 mm that is small in size and click on apply anything else if you want so the second thing is so it is not touching the lines are not touching so offset distance line suspension is uh, offset distance is 2.5 mm so we'll keep both 0 so that will come from the pad wherever you click from there it will come so right click here we'll choose the linear dimensions and then click on the first pin to second pin sorry we should uh, click on linear dimensions first click on second click we can see that uh, line is coming from the center of the pins so now you can see the header is reduced a little bit so that is 0.5 and 1 mm in height so this way this is the, the distance between the first pin to second pin that is 0.95 and we can also select the distance from this to this and you can see this is 0.27 so if you want to display mm here so it is just not displayed mm so it just showed 0.95 if you want mm in front of it we will create it. so first thing we will discuss how to delete this we cannot delete using the delete button so we don't have any dimension options here so even if you all on we will not be able to delete this one so to delete the dimensions we should go to dimension options dimension environment right click and you can choose the delete dimensions option so click on the delete dimensions and then it will be selected then double click on it so it will be deleted right click and then done it can do it so the second thing uh, we are going to discuss about uh, the mm so go to dimension dimension environment right click the linear dimensions so i'll choose first pin to second pin in the options you can see it will show you the distance so it is generated from the computer it this is what the measured value and you can add your own text here so for example i want that 0.95 so 
space r and that mm press enter so the distance will be here 0.95 mm i'll just keep it yeah. second thing we need the distance from one row to another row so that is 0.95 which is we have added here but it is the right value is 2.7 so we can change it to 2.7 mm so that will be displayed here so i'll keep that 2.27 mm here click ok so you can see the arrow marks here arrow marks still big in size not to worry so if you still want to decrease you can decrease it by going to parameter option and line so here it is 0 0.25 i'll reduce it to 0 0.25 and i'll uh, it reduce it to 0 0.5 mm and right click done so first thing i will delete this right click here and delete dimension delete the dimensions and choose the linear dimensions from here to here it is 2.7 we need 2.7 mm and bring it inside and then click here we got the small size arrow mark similarly from first pin to second pin so it is 0 0.95 we'll keep it 0 0.95 in a text 0 0.95 press enter and we can add center of these two pins so we can see the dimensions here similarly we need the dimension details about the pins so we can use we can also add the pin dimension details so we can take right right click here linear dimensions so we just go to the edge of this pin edge of this pin to edge of this pin so right click here snap pick to we can use the pad edge vertex remember here we must use the pad edge vertex so you can see a small dot here it is not coming uh, exactly on the arc so we can cancel that's one so you can use the, uh, the, the dimensions dimension environment and uh, we can use the leader line here click on this and then right click we can add the text here so this 1.1 into 0 0.6 just press enter and we can just keep it on top of it right click just place it here and you can see 1.1 and 0 0.6 mm that is more than enough to identify the pad area so next thing we need to do some drawings here so if you want to hide the details here hide uh, if you want to hide the dimension details just go to options here we got the diamond board geometry and dimensions we got a small button here if you click it it will be hidden i'll just show you by just clicking on it so it will be hidden but it is not deleted whenever you want you can come back here and click on this it will be unhard but meanwhile i'll just make it uh, hide next thing we need to do the designing so drawing so first thing drawing is first drawing is assembly top so we'll discuss assembly top what are assembly top and uh, what are the rules to create the assembly top where do we find the assembly top details the drawing part has uh, many options here so first thing we are going to discuss about uh, the component assembly so we also call it as assembly top here so assembly top here assembly top is the actual size of the component this is actual part area so we need to mention actual component area which is given in the data sheet so just go to the data sheet option data sheet here so we'll open the data sheet so here we have only only the land pattern just come up and we can see the component size here the component size uh, here mentioned as 3.05 and 1.75 this is the component size the length and width of the actual area of the component so this is uh, we draw on pcb as an assembly top so we'll go uh, we will see that is uh, rules to create the assembly top uh, first thing we are going to create uh, this as a line so we can also have an option to create it as a shape but uh, prefer always a line so whenever we want to create using a line so we must have a line width so line width must be uh, you can use it uh, four mils 
or five mils you can use it so here mils if you convert the four mils into millimeters it will be 0 0.1016 1016 and uh, six five mils is a 0 0.127 in mm so line width will be 0 0.1 or 0 0.127 you can keep it for a proper visibility so we'll create it so uh, we also need to mention the class and subclass of this so class will be uh, package geometry so package geometry refers to a footprint and a subclass so we also min need to mention the subclass so subclass is what assembly so we'll go to add here so we have got uh, the tools here add and the lines inside the add we got some tools like uh, line arc radius three point arc circle rectangle and rectangle so so many options we have here and also the same options we can see here a line option so you can choose line from this particular icon so click on the add and then line so always come back to the right side options here inside the options we have got uh, class and subclass active class and subclass I'm going to create the assembly for my component footprint. So I will choose here the package geometry. Package geometry refers to your footprint or the component. So we can choose the subclass as assembly top. I'll make sure here this uh, particular uh, pin or the button or the switch also you can say it should be on. So we, whatever we draw, we can visible it. In some case, if, if it is off, you will be able to draw you will be able to draw the assembly but assembly will not be visible on the black screen so i'll just on this particular button that is assembly button so whatever i draw so i can see it next thing here we have a, a line lock here so the line lock that is a 45 degree so line lock here at the component area is a rectangular area so every corner is 90 degrees so you can see every corner is 90 degree so I can use by default line lock is 90 degree so here I will choose the line lock as 90 degree if you use off if you use line lock is off then um, every corner you can you can draw a free free hand lines here. so if you use 45 degree on every corner it will give you 45 degree bending and if you keep 90 degree so yes every corner will have a 90 degree bending so instead of line other than line we have also have arc here so we don't use arc option here so if any component uh, corner is arc or uh, rounded uh, corner so you can use arc option so we will use a line with a 90 degree of every line lock or line width line width here so as i told you line width standard uh, ATC, ATC standards it may be 4 mils or 5 mils proper visible line width you can use it so I'll choose a point 0.1 here that's 4 mils or if you want 5 mils you can use 1 to 7 that is 0.1 to 7 mm is line width. A line font I will use a line font as a solid so it's solid in the sense here it's a continuous line so we have got many lines here hidden lines phantom lines dotted lines and centered lines so the best option uh, for ours uh, you can use a solid options so I'll use solid here so and then we need to draw an assembly area with respect to the origin so I wanted to start it from the origin and I want to move the particular rectangle to the center of the body okay we'll open the assembly uh, data sheet so here the assembly area so towards x-axis it is uh, 1.75 we got two options here one is minimum and another one is one is minimum and another one is maximum so we can use uh, any one option you can use so i'll use the maximum standard here 1.75 uh, in x-axis and then i will use y-axis so i'm gonna use uh, the 3.5 that is 3.05 mm so x-axis is uh, 1.75 y-axis is 3.05 i will use the same in command options so first thing i'm gonna click wherever you want or if you want to click it on origin you can click it on origin so here uh, the thing command x if i keep x and 0 0 so x it means the origin and if you space uh, i have given a space one space it turns to x axis that is on origin and then one more space it turns to y axis and that is also zero that means we will that the click is done on the origin so if you want to click ix there is a one more difference here the first thing is x that means on from origin from origin and uh, ix you can also use one more command called ix ix means from the last click 
from the previous click also we can say from the previous click so here what we need is uh, we need to draw a line so from x from origin i will draw a line so first thing we need to put the command as x space 0 space 0 and then it will start creating from the origin so i want to move towards x axis and towards y axis the x axis is uh, we have got some coordinates and y axis is also we have got some coordinates so i need to use in that time i mean i want to use it from ix so i want it from the previous click so i wanted it from the previous click and then it will draw so according to data sheet it is 1.75 is x axis and 3.05 is y axis so instead of clicking on uh, uh, origin i will use x space zero space zero press enter you can see the drawing uh, tool is active now every bending is 90 degree and line width is of uh, 0.127 and towards x axis i want uh, 1 point 1.75 and towards y axis it will be 0 0.3.05 so i will use ix command ix that is 1.75 and the space i'll take 3.05 press enter uh, we have got x and y axis and then and the next click i want it to be on the origin so i will choose x space o space o as 0 space 0 press enter and i have got the actual rectangle so this is the assembly area i'll just do right click and done so assembly area we can cross check using the scale i will use the scale here so click on the scale and go to find options i'll off everything and i will choose the other segments option so click on the other segment uh, click on the x that length here so that is sorry i will use the information button so i can use the show element here show element button you can use and then click all off and then click on the other segment option so as soon as you click on other segment click on the first segment here this is x segment the length is uh, 1.75 as it is mentioned in the data sheet 1.75 and i want the other data uh, other segment click on the other segment and that is 0 3.05 mm which is mentioned in the data sheet 3.05 mm so other than that you can also use uh, the dimensions option so i will use the dimensions here i click on the dimension so we can choose right click here linear dimensions so i'll click on the first and then i'm going to click on the make it only a visible line so visible so just cancel it so we go to dimensions so click on uh, dimension environment right click here right click and choose and uh, i'll make it all off and i'll choose other segment so you can see the segment here and you can see 0 0.35 click exactly on center yes we have hidden it so on top of it also you can choose 1.75 click it here right click and then done so if you want to see it so we're going to go to board geometry and dimensions on it and you can see the board geometry details so the next thing uh, we need to move this assembly top to the or center of the body so to move it so i'll click on the move button so here as the move options icon and come back to right side find options i want it to move only lines here so i will make it all off I will only choose the lines so if i choose only lines no pads no text will be selected only line will be selected so if i click it so wherever i clicked it is started moving so i will not be able to adjust exactly on center so what i'm going to do i will just go to options here so click on the point so here click on the point and select the body center so whenever i click on this it will center to body the origin is jump to center of that particular assembly area so i'll just click on uh, x00 i'll go to command space x space 0 space 0 that is what we click on origin press enter right click and then done so your assembly is done so we can on the dimensions and you can cross check that is 1.75 and 2.7 mm is so we can uh, recreate again so we'll go to dimension dimension environment right click and then click on the delete dimensions so 1.75 i'm going to click and then we'll click this one right click and done so we'll go with the dimension dimension environment right click linear dimensions i will choose uh, other segments here click on this go to options so it is 1.75 mm so i will choose 1.75 
mm press and enter so we can add that 1.75 mm on top of it so click yes yes this is 1.75 the other side uh, we wanted okay the one point is 3.05 mm so 3.05 mm so if you want right side or left side you can keep it so i'll keep it on left side that is 3.05 mm and then right can be done so you can hide the dimensions whenever you are going to verify the footprints and you can opt on the dimensions and then you can verify the details so just i'll make it uh, dimensions off yes we have uh, successfully done uh, the assem uh, assembly top you can see the assembly area so by info by clicking on info go to find option other segments so click on this 1.75 is a width and uh, 1.3.05 is the length of the component i just do right click and done so what about the width here so we can see width is 0.1 mm so you can see width is given as 0.127 that is 5 mils width also we have assigned this is about uh, creating assembly top uh, that is the actual area of the component uh, we will create it whenever you want you can create it and send it to origin so I'll, one more method is i'll just delete this assembly so i'll go to add line everything is same in options we can choose package geometry we can choose assembly top 90 degree 4 to 5 mils solid and you can click wherever you want you can click it so i'm going to click it outside here yes one click i did it so i want it from the previous click so i'll press ix space the length is uh, the width is 1.75 and the space 3.05 press enter and then we need to come back here zoom it and then click right click and then done so this is also the same assembly so click on move click on body center in find option click on the lines and click on the line so it will be jump to center so you, instead of clicking on origin i can press command as x space 0 space 0 press enter and then right click done so this is uh, about creating the assembly along with the details along with the, some standards the next thing we will create is assembly reference we call it as assembly reference so reference here is naming the assembly we must give the naming of every every component so i created an assembly here so we need to mention the name of the assembly so that is called assembly reference we also call it as a reference designator for assembly top so we can go to layout options so go to labels and use the reference options so layout labels and reflex the same option will be there that icon you can see here the same icon will be here so you can use this icon that is also a reference designator icon so i will choose the reference designator icon so the same thing will come so go to options here so the class is changed to reference designator and the subclass is changed to assembly top yes so reference designator it means we are uh, giving some names to who so that to we assembly top so you can use the text block here whichever text block you want you can use so i choose uh, text block one that's more than enough here so click on assembly i'll click on assembly so it is an ic so i will use u and then star followed by star u is uh, universal that is every ic we use u1 u2 u3 in schematic level and here the star is a variable so it will change according to your schematic so u1 uh, u star i can keep that is the assembly reference so next thing we need to assign the height of the component we'll see the height of the component is 1.1 is mentioned here so 1.1 is the height so we must mention the height of the component just to, for any height restricted components so how to mention the height so we'll go to uh, we'll add one more uh, shape called place bound top so place bound top that means the bound here refers to boundary top refers to top side of the pcb place is the area which we are going to mention it on the assembly so i wanted the third direction here i got x direction here and then i got y direction so this is assembly area so i want the third direction that is at z the direction that is third dimension that is that decides the height of the component and i am going to create a uh, shape of shape called place bond top and i can assign the height to this particular shape so to create that i can uh, I, I will, we will have a uh, many options so we can create a shape and then you can use a rectangular 
and here we can use uh, class as package geometry and subclass as a place bound top so next thing we can draw manually so we can draw manually just on top of the assembly top so right click if you do done you can see a view and 3d option so view 3d so the some height is assigned here and by by default there is there will be a, some height is assigned if there is no place bound top so i will delete the place bound top so you can see uh, the view and 3d view options so we will not be able to see the component height. so place bound top is necessary but how much place bound top we need to add so i just wanted the same area as assembly so i can go to shape here rectangular so we can place the rectangle here second option you can see here the class is package geometry second one is subclass is place bound top and the place a rectangle width we know that is 1.75 and the height we know that is 3.05 and uh, the corner every corner is orthogonal here orthogonal that means it is 90 degree bending chamfer if you take the chamfer will have a 45 degree bending and round if you take round will be a rounded rectangle so i'll use orthogonal here we can see the shape here i'll keep it outside right click and done and you can see the 3d view the outside we got some height here so i just wanted uh, this uh, shape to be centered place it is exactly center of the body so click on move we can choose the body center so instead of in find instead of line i must use the shapes option because i created this as a shape if i choose a line you will not be able to select this particular shape so click on shapes and then click here it is body centered i'll keep it x space zero space zero press enter and then right click done so this way also we can create it you can draw manually or you can use with respect to uh, area so we can assign the area also the third option is you can take the shape here rectangular so here instead of uh, drawing we can draw manually and we can add place with the rectangle width and height also we can mention it and we can bring it inside and place it so if it is not exactly going so you can keep it outside and then you can move with body center and you can add it to x00 there is one more, one more method we have so i'll just delete this one so we can also have copy uh, using the assembly area so we can go to edit click on z copy shape and here i'll choose the package geometry as a class class in subclass is place bound top and I'm, I'm gonna contract or expand so offset must be zero so click on assembly line so right click done so you can see the assembly the place bound is created exactly on top of the assembly so we can see the view and the 3d view you can see some certain height is mentioned so now we need to mention the exact height according to data sheet the exact height is 1.1 is the maximum height 0.7 is the minimum height so i'm going to use 1.1 the maximum height so to mention the height go to setups here area and then go to package height setups area then package height so here on the right side you can see in options we got the minimum and maximum height but that is deactivated we must click on the assembly uh, place bound top as soon as you click on the place bound top the minimum and maximum height section is open so i will use 1.1 maximum height press enter come inside right click and do done so now we'll go to view option and then 3d we can see the exact height of the component exact height of the component is assigned here so this is how we are going to add uh, component height assembly top and the place bound top so now uh, we will discuss about self screen top Cell screen uh, is a print on PCB whatever we draw that will be if, if I draw it as a fill screen so that will print on PCB and as a ink print so here we can uh, use a freehand drawing whatever you draw on this design that will be printed on the PCB board so we would like to take the cell screen so I'll go to add line so we'll go to uh, package geometry as a class <coughs> cell screen as a subclass and here again as, as a rule so we can take any line off or 45 degree if you want to bend 45 degree as a line block uh, 90 degree so you can take 90 degree 
So line width must be a minimum of 6 mm that is 0.1524 mm that's millimeters. We can take a line log solid. So then we can draw it outside or inside. So make sure you should not overlap on the pins. If you overlap on the pins that is uh, that will not print on the PCB so it will uh, it will cut the area of uh, area of the cell screen where uh, it comes on the particular sort of pad so we avoid that uh, drawing so we can take it from the outside so I will take it from the outside here this way so uh, to make it easy so we'll change the grids to 0.5 a little bit more grades so I'll take 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is uh, 20 mils in uh, mill unit. So it is 20 mils. We have taken the grades, and I will on the grades here. I will on the grades so I can now I can analyze uh, where to draw. So I can draw it from this point, and this way we can draw it outside. Even you can draw the cell screen inside, but make sure it should not touch your uh, uh, solder pad. So you can draw this way cell screen that will print on PCB. So meanwhile, I will off the assembly line. So I'll go to just right click on. So I'll go to options here. So I'll check assembly, and then I'll hide the assembly along with the place bound top. Just uh, place bound top and hide it. So then we'll draw the cell screen top. So we'll take the edge line, and then I will go to package geometry, and then cell screen top 90 degree, 90 degree. A line lock and a line width is uh, 0 0.1524 that is uh, 6 mils in mils so we can draw it outside from this pad I can take at least 20 mils and then 20 mils you can draw outside you can draw this way so that is that that will print on PCB as a cell screen so otherwise uh, you can draw uh, using the notch options so you can take add that is uh, 3 point R so I would like to draw the arc here and exactly on the center of the component and then we can take the line so we'll start the line from this so I'll right click here snap pick 2 and we can take it uh, the, from the segment vertex so we can take it from segment vertex so it will uh, attach it will join uh, this particular arc and you can draw simply just click and then while clicking here right click and again snap pick to take the segment vertex and then right click done so we'll cross check uh, while moving so it will come as a solid cell screen so we can move this with the body center and send it to x00 just for our proper uh, positioning so this is now properly set on uh, uh, exactly center of the PCB so this is this will print on PCB this notch represents that uh, exactly right uh, left side pin of the notch is your first pin of the IC uh, this way this is one of the way we can create uh, the cell screen top the other way you can free and drawing you can do it I just keep it side and we'll draw another uh, cell screen for this so just keep it one just I'll show you another method here so go to add line and then you can take cell screen all details in the left side in the right side panel so make sure the active class and subclass is uh, package geometry and the cell screen top respectively and then uh, line lock is 90 degree line width is 6 mils and a line font uh, we choose as a solid next thing we can draw it as a normal rectangle so we can draw a normal rectangle so to uh, to add the notch so we, uh, we have got the uh, arc here so that is T point arc we have used and we have selected and here we can choose a bend here at any corner that pin number one side corner we can make it bend so we go to dimensions in chamfer chamfer with the 0.7 or 1 mm so we can see this way also we can create the cell screen top for any IC so this bend corner uh, shows uh, that is the pin number one side corner this way also you can create it uh, and the other way is I uh, just keep it side other way you can keep it one more just, just like a rectangle will draw and then outside we can draw uh, using the shape and then you can use the polygon shape make sure if you choose the polygon shape also your class and subclass are package geometry and cell screen top respectively so keep it as keep it as that is so here we can draw an, a small arrow mark or a triangle that represents that is the pin number one or otherwise you can also draw this this is as a notch 
so that notch represents that is pin number one and also you can draw a shape of circular so you can take option as package geometry and sales on top as a class and subclass respectively and then you can add a small notch that is dot this dot will print if you want to reduce the dot size you can reduce the grids and you can draw the particular circle otherwise you can draw using the shape circle and you can choose here a place a circle option so it gets radius of 0.5 mm so 1 mm radius if you take it so it will be big in size so we can take 0.25 mm so we can get the small circle and we can put it on the PCB so in the PCB it just will come as a solid print and that at which side if you have a point that side is pin number one identification this is just a pin number one identification or otherwise you can also create uh, also add the text option here so you can go to add and text you can take text mark one and here we can type text one right click done so this pin number one that is number one will be displayed on the are displayed or printed on the PCB so this will represent this side pin means pin number one so I got many options so we will use just a, a notch with a notch option so I'll just delete this these are the several methods of creating the sales screen for your any IC so I'll take this one and then keep it H00 press enter this is the most ready most traditional way of creating the sales screen we will add we'll open all my sales screen assembly top and uh, place bound top font sales screen is done so you can go for sales screen naming we'll go to layout label reference designator so class is reference designator and subclass is sales screen top so click on uh, the sales screen line and you can go for new star as a reference so right click and then down so this is a sales screen uh, procedure of creating sales screen and outside the sales screen we should add uh, DFA bound top the next topic is of uh, DFA bound top so DFA refers to design for assembly bound refers to boundary and top refers to side of the top side of the PCB here this uh, design for assembly design for assembly is uh, one more area so this is the final boundary so I'll keep it outside that is 20 to 25 mils outside I'll decide that is final boundary of this component no other components allowed inside this particular area if any other components are exceeded or overlapped on this design for assembly so that will show you error and it will not allow you to add the component on PCB board so we, we should maintain a proper distance between other components so design for assembly gives you a component to component distance so it will give you proper distance between one component to another component so we'll get a proper clearance between the two components between components so this will help the assembler to uh, place the component properly you can solder it uh, easily and as well as you can do it desolder or you can even test uh, tester can test it test any pin without any issues so design for assembly is uh, one of the part of a PCB uh, this footprint footprint design so we can give uh, from the sales screen we can go with the 20 to 25 mils so most of the time we use 20 to 25 mils from the uh, sales screen top so some industries use 10 to 15 mils that is also no issue, not an issue so if you take a proper 20 to 20 mils so it will, assembler will be very easy assembler it, it is very easy for assembler to mount the component on PCB and solder it properly so we can uh, draw manually the DFA bound top so you can go to shape option and you can choose rectangular and you can use package geometry and the DFA bound top should be a subclass option so we can draw manually we'll choose a draw manual option the draw rectangle so outside we got 0.5 mm grid so I outside you can draw it so this is one way of creating DFA bound top manually adding so otherwise uh, you can choose edit z copy shape so we can go dfa bound top and we can expand here 0.5 mm expand 0.5 that's that means 20 mils from the cell screen so we should click on cell screen so it will just copy the shape of the cell screen so right click and click on done 
So this is a DFA bound top. So DFA bound top uh, gives you component to component clearance. So it, it is uh, it will be helpful for assembler to assemble or to mount the component on PCB, solder on PCB and desoldering if required, as well as uh, testing testing proper also it will be very helpful. So this is about DFA bound top. So once you add the DFA bound top, click on uh, file and then click on save. So click yes. So you can see in the command command box. The drawing uh, is created and that is saved on the disk and the second thing is dot psm that is timer dot psm is created here the psm is your package symbol module that is the actual pcb footprint so we need a psm uh, to attach on this uh, schematic level and that will once we switch the schematic to pcb board so on pcb board instead of the component we can draw this uh, symbol component symbol you can see footprints of those particular components so this is about footprint creation so next thing we will discuss about uh, 3d mapping so we have already created a 3d mapping so we need to add so we just go to views and a 3d view so this is a general 3d view so we have assigned the height so we can see the height of the component i'll just remove this uh, dfa bound top just to add the 3d model you can if you want you can keep it and uh, we'll see how that uh, 3d model works so to add the 3d model so we have already downloaded the 3d model so downloaded and we have kept that in the download folder so in the download folder we got the step model we have downloaded everything from the lesson to collection of data sheet and uh, 3d models so this is a 3d model so we just copy this so we'll see where we need to save our we need to paste that particular model so go to setup option so we in the setup option we have got a step package mapping so this is a step package mapping so click on the step package package mapping so inside the step package mapping we can see our footprint on pcb so here we got the list so here we have got this 3d model list but we are not finding our 3d model here so we should add the 3d model so we got the name here click on the path option it will tell you where to save the uh, step path so the environment step path is currently set to that we should go to c drive cadence spv 17.2 share local pcb and then click on the step so this is the location where we need to save our step model so we'll go to that location so we should uh, go to c drive the c drive uh, go to cadence and then we should go to spv 17.2 uh, from the spv 17.2 we should go to share local then pcb we should go to share and then click on local and then click on pcb inside pcb we got uh, the step folder so we should go to step folder open the step folder and we got the step files here right click and I can paste the step file which we have copied right here TPL is the step file for uh, this particular IC so we will look now for that particular component so click OK so we'll uh, close and reopen this 3d view or uh, setups step mapping step package mapping and now we will look for the TPL step file so this is our TPL step file just click on it you can see the step file is you can you can see the step file is coming on so we will uh, we have some options here that is primary step model secondary step model and then uh, front left we can overlay first thing is we will overlay you can see both were overlapped and uh, we will do step model will hide the PCB board and then we will overlay yes the component is vertical now so we need to rotate the component so to rotate the component we have an options here called rotations here so you should go to rotations option and it will rotate X Y and Z directions so in G direction cell just give 90 degree the component is rotated in Z direction will make it zero so y direction we will see we will keep it 90 degrees so that is also not right and then we will go with the x direction we will put 90 degree yeah so now we will overlay option here we can choose overlay 
now both are getting overlaid so we we'll should go to view option and we will start it from the top view so we'll just make the exact positioning just click and uh, move right side and left side we'll see overlay so we we'll see it from the back side okay component is a little bit bottom side we should move towards the y z direction so here we got the offset option so we should click on z direction so i'll make it zero first yes so now it is exactly on top of the pcb surface so go back to here and we can see the bottom view the component is aligned properly we should go to front left the component is arranged properly yes that is what uh, we have uh, properly added the pcb footprint and then we should click on the save button so i just click on the save button here and then close it so now we will see the 3d view go to view option and then 3d view we can see both here so both means we have assigned this uh, height of the component that is not 1.1 height that is for place bound top so we will hide the place bound top and check it out so we should go to right side option so go to place bound top and we'll hide the place bound and save it so go to view and then 3d options so we can only see the 3d on the component solder pads so component on solder pads properly assigned so this is how we are going to make 3d step model aligned on the solder pad exactly so we can see it from the top view we should go to view option uh, camera option top option see the component is exactly aligned and place it on component uh, solder pads we can see it from the bottom view and we can see it from the back side and we can see it from the left side yes, right side and zoom to fit so this is the 3d way prospective view we also call it as so this is uh, the land pattern so solder pad you can see this is pad one two three four five six pads are land pattern so on this we keep the component and we will solder on this area this is a solder pad we can solder on this area so this is uh, the entire uh, procedure of creating the footprint creation and then we have also assigned the height of the component and then we uh, have attached the step model and we are just looking for looking here the 3d we we can analyze and if if i use this particular component on the pcb so we can uh, see that component will also show in 3d map 3d step mapping so on pcb board we can completely see the 3d models if i add every component of your sub if you if you have a circuit with uh, 10 15 components if you uh, use the step model step models for every component we can see the entire board in 3d view so this is a procedure from the beginning to end so this is a complete procedure of creating the pcb footprint if you have any questions uh, let me know we will discuss about the questions and uh, we will discuss about more footprints in the near future till then happy learning have a happy